Hello and welcome to this video on MSG. MSG is otherwise known as monosodium glutamate and glutamic acid in different foods and circumstances. It is a naturally occurring protein salt that has been associated with adverse events in some people. MSG is also a flavor enhancer in foods like meat, mushrooms, cheese, soy sauce, and miso. This flavor is known as umami. MSG is why some food tastes better the next day. Chemical interaction of the ingredients leads to MSG being formed over time. Glutamate is core to this compound, and it is an amino acid. Amino acids are the fundamental units of a protein. It is not essential for human life, as it can be synthesized. In humans, it also performs the role of neurotransmitter. For this video, the relevant feature is its presence in most proteins. It has this structure with a 5-carbon backbone and the obligatory amino group. Glutamate is present in two forms. The first is L-glutamate. This is the relevant and active form. The second is D-glutamate. This makes up to 5% of the total glutamate content. This varies with production methods. As an overall rule, when glutamate is combined with water, it becomes mildly acidic. Now that you have the basics of glutamate and what it is, here you can see the most common, nearly pure form. This is 99% monosodium glutamate. It was purchased from a local store as a 1 kilogram bag. The owner was careful to advise using it in modest quantities. In fact, less than a teaspoon. But why? That question will be answered later, along with others. Glutamic acid was identified in 1866 by a German scientist, and he found that it was responsible for flavour, the flavour we know today. It was only in 1907 that a Japanese scientist was able to isolate a crude form of MSG from kelp, or as it was known, and still is, kombu. Although why Kiku and Ikida decided to taste it, is a mystery. From this, he was able to figure out how it produced the characteristic taste, called umami. He patented a process of creating this compound. As of 2005, 1.5 million tons of glutamate is produced annually. The modern process uses Corinobacterium glutamicum, which mass produces glutamate. As a result, other bacteria have been identified which can produce alternative amino acids. In the case of glutamate synthesis, glutamicum bacteria are grown in a nutrient-rich media where they excrete glutamic acid. From here, it is separated out from the media, bacteria, and other waste. The glutamic acid is processed, and this forms a salt. The interesting and relevant thing here is where else you can find glutamate in high concentrations. Particularly relevant is yeast extract, where it can make 5 to 20% of the total amino acid composition. This table from Wikipedia gives you some idea of how common and central glutamate is in some species and products, and finally where it can be found. There is an obvious association between certain flavors and products. Perhaps part of this can be explained by the role glutamate plays in the citric acid cycle. Glutamate is used as a flavor enhancer, and some businesses make a point of advertising that they do not use it. The interesting thing is that the flavor enhancing effect of MSG is not affected by the pH of the food it is in. This is because the carbon backbone and their amine group are the key to its efficacy. The loss of a hydrogen ion or donation of an electron does not alter that fact. Unfortunately, for all the reliability of MSG as a flavor enhancer, glutamate has a slightly checkered history, and this may be part of why some businesses advertise that they do not use it. The short version of this is that an opinion letter to the New England Journal of Medicine sparked an unproved fear that MSG causes an illness. An illness called Chinese Restaurant Syndrome. This condition has never been shown to have a consistent effect or presence, despite incredibly rigorous studies. Its symptoms are variable, 
and cover many common experiences. As a consequence, the condition is often self-diagnosed. Though as a result of this and other events, several FDA investigations and laws were implemented, which affected MSG labelling on food. The benefit to this history and controversy is the investigation of glutamates and toxicity. The primary findings relate to neurotoxicity. The cause of this is in mice. When MSG was consumed early on in development, it caused damage to the brain. In humans, this is theorized to be blocked by the blood-brain barrier, a system which prevents large molecules from getting through to the brain, things like proteins. The last Society for Neuroscience, which attempted to address this matter, ended in a split opinion. The conclusion being that normal dietary intake is not dangerous, and that serum levels of MSG are well within safe tolerances after having consumed it. The one caveat to this was about extremely high doses and an unknown danger. However, this may be a simple reference to an old adage of the dose makes the poison and an incredibly large amount of anything is likely to be a certain amount of danger. This has not prevented MSG as being regarded as a dangerous product in some regards, despite the fact that it is generally recognised as being safe. MSG is still required to be marked as an additive in most countries. Some countries even go so far as to make use of labels indicating that something is MSG free illegal. This may be a result of the naturally occurring amounts of MSG in food. This could be unintended chemical reactions or simple aging, but either way, it is always present in some amount and most countries will have it marked as being present to some degree. Thank you for watching this video. If it has been of interest, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.